Hey guys, remember I was restoring a 17-inch Predator a few months ago, and one of them had an original CRT in it that had a heater cathode short. I tried running it off a separate power transformer to isolate it from the rest of the set, but it just couldn't get any image on the CRT, so I ended up replacing it. But I wanted to take another closer look at it. So, here it is. I have my ohm meter between the cathode and one of the heater pins and we have 1.2 ohms uh, I got a similar reading between the cathode and the other side of the heater and between the two heaters um, a little bit more resistance so it seems like part of the heater the filament has uh, shifted or maybe a piece of debris has fallen in there and it's shorting the cathode which is a metal sleeve to the heater so um, they, they need to be isolated for the CRT to work properly uh, few testers claim that they you can do anything about it uh, in particular my Suncor uh, tester says that you, there's nothing you can do um, write it off and replace it but I've heard it's possible supposedly um, this technique can work sometimes. What I'm going to do is charge up an electrolytic capacitor and discharge it between the cathode and one side of the heater to hopefully burn out, blow away, whatever is causing the short. Um, what voltage to use, what capacitance to use, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but I, I'm going to go with an 82 microfarad and charge it up to 100 volts. I'm going to use my Capacitor, leakage tester to do that. Okay, it's fully charged. And I'll go between this and that. Huh, I thought maybe it would have had a spark. Try that again. It's charged. Hmm, well, let's check resistance. Well, still short. Well, let's up the ante to 200 volts. Alright, charged up. There we go, now we got a spark. And let's see if that did anything. Well, it's actually more shorted now. It's down to 0 0.1, 0 0.2 ohms. And I blew open the filament. So <laughs> that's kind of what I thought was going to happen. That's why they, they say you can't fix a uh, heater cathode short, especially not when it's a dead short like that where it's less than an ohm. Uh, the metal was probably making direct contact, and I just blew up in the filament so oh well I figured I didn't have anything to lose and maybe I can get it rebuilt someday I thought it might be a little confusing to visualize um, what actually is a failure mode here so came up with some props it's a little bit oversimplified but it's the idea across I think so imagine the cathode is a metal tube that is coated with a material that easily emits electrons when heated barium or strontium oxide or some such the heater is just some resistance wire uh, and it's like, like what you have in your toaster so this is just to get hot it serves no other purpose and that simply goes inside and the two should never touch that gives you a few advantages now let's go back to earlier tubes, really early tubes, they just had this, just a filament, and the filament itself emitted electrons. That's very inefficient. Uh, later tubes, they would coat them with material, the same that you'd put on the cathode, which does certainly improve their emissions, but you don't get some added benefits you get when it's isolated, and that is you can put a bias voltage on the cathode. You can put a modulated signal on the cathode. 
And you can have whatever power you want going to the filament, AC, DC, square wave. It doesn't matter. It just matters what the RMS power going to the filament is to get it to a certain temperature to heat up the cathode. So we can ignore the filament entirely. Now, why would you want to put a bias voltage on the cathode or modulate it? Isn't that what the grid is for? Yes. But if, the, if this is isolated, you can bias or modulate either one. It comes into play in TVs because you have stages of amplification. Think of them as being biased class A, which means that the signal on the grid gets flipped 180 degrees out of phase um, on the plate. So the input and output are 100 degrees out, uh, out of phase. So every stage of amplification flips the signal back and forth, back and forth. So by the time you get to the pitcher tube, your signal may be in phase or out of phase as you would need to modulate it via the grid. Now if it's out of phase, you could have an extra tube that just simply inverts the signal with a gain of unity and you're wasting money in an extra tube and another part that could fail. Or you fix the bias on the grid and feed your signal to the cathode. That's what they do when they predict the sets and plenty of other TVs. It's just the way the number of amplifications stages work out, which I believe in this case is just one, which uh, is pretty common in later sets because the tubes had enough gain that you just needed one stage of video amplification after the detector. So, uh, so that's the problem because the filament supply, one side of it is grounded and the other side goes to the 6.3 volt AC supply. So if that shorts into the cathode, you can no longer modulate a signal on the cathode because it gets swamped, pulled down to ground by the filament. Or it would feed the signal into the filaments on all the other tubes and, and cause all sorts of problems. Um, okay, so that's what the problem is. We can't properly bias or to feed a signal into the cathode because it's shorted to the filament. But why can't we clear it? Well, this is metal. This is metal. The two touch they get welded together essentially and me trying to break a weld by putting current through it is going to do nothing except reinforce the weld or pop the wire and that's what happened in this case it blew open one side of the filament that's why they say you can't clear it now how might it have happened i mentioned that maybe somebody tried to rejuvenate it but there's another very good possibility which is that the set was handled roughly maybe it was dropped and just physical from inertia that things can get shifted out of place and bump into each other. Uh, and then when the set was turned on and voltage was applied, that kind of sealed the deal. Um, so I suppose theoretically if you knew what side the short was on and it was just physical, you could whack it and bread, but you know, what are the odds of you being able to figure that out? And in the case of those short necked predict uh, electron guns rather than being oriented like this to make them shorter they're actually oriented like this they took the electron gun assembly out of actually a miniature tube like imagine a 6a 6au6 or something like that and taking the cathode and film and grid out of that and using that as the electron gun in a pitcher tube it's much much smaller but also uh kind of delicate uh, and probably the, responsible for the shorter life as well. But anyways, that's what happened. This touched this, which should never happen. They get welded together, and there's really no way to get it back apart. Oh well, I will add this CRT to my growing pile of duds in the hope that someday it can get rebuilt. Thanks for watching.